And something that I'm really interested in is your adventure in construction. How did you find your way into the industry? Because as somebody that does his research, I researched you, I stalked your LinkedIn and all your profiles, <laughs> and I realized that you studied accounting in yeah. college. And yeah. then and then your your LinkedIn goes then to all of your senior roles. So right. I don't get to see that progression into constru construction from looking at your profile. So how did you actually find your way into construction as a whole yeah. and realize it was the industry for you? All right. Well, that's yeah. That's 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 certainly a good question. So I, 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 uh, I graduated from the University of Maryland in 1975 with a bachelor's in accounting. Went to work for a a small local firm initially as an accountant, uh, doing accounting work, audit work, tax work, the, the 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 standard fare of being an accountant in an accounting firm or practice. Uh, and then I went to work for a, a larger regional firm, and then eventually. Uh, I moved from being an accountant on a day-to-day -day basis. I moved into the consulting practice of, uh, of a fairly, fair, actually it was one of the, at the time was referred to as the big eight, uh, the eight largest accounting and consulting firms globally. And I went to work for one of those firms uh, in their consulting practice. Uh, and what I took with me into their consulting practice was an exposure to the construction industry by virtue of having done audits uh, on a couple of contractors uh, and a couple of material suppliers. And actually back in, and this is in the early eighties, um, I audited a company that at the time was one of the few companies that manufactured vinyl windows. Now today that's, that's, that's a pretty standard uh, material used in, 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 in what would be labeled probably the lower end from a quality standpoint of windows or the, the most uh, cost efficient might be a nicer way to say it. Uh, and then you move up and you go to the Andersons and the Pellas and all that kind of stuff. But that was my first exposure. And then while I was at the consulting firm, uh, I began I, I did a consulting engagement for an individual who owned four different companies. Uh, two were construction companies and two were materials suppliers. Uh, and uh, so I, I got that initial exposure. Uh, after a period of time, uh, I decided that I wanted to leave the very large firm I was with. And, and I thought at the time, being full of myself at the age of you know 23 or 24 uh, that you know I, I don't need to stay at this big firm and you know just you know yeah I make good money blah 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 but I, I'm going to do it on my own uh, in hindsight that was a mistake but that's a whole other conversation um, but I so I left and I started my own consulting practice and and I did that uh, with the direct uh, aid of this particular individual and his four companies uh, because he, he he liked what I had done for them. He said, you know, I'd like you to continue to be associated with my companies. Uh, and so why don't we negotiate some kind of a retainer agreement? Uh, so wow. I was one of those lucky people. And it, and it happens occasionally today, maybe even maybe even more often than I, than I think it does. But back then, uh, if somebody wanted you to do something and you said, well, let's talk about a retainer, that could be a very expeditious way to suddenly find yourself in business. And that's what I did. Um, so, so that's how I started. Um, and from there, I just had a connection to the construction industry with that, with it, with the contracting company. And I was their vice president of business development for a period of time. Um, and then just kind of, you know, migrated a bit, uh, left that company after a while, um, uh, started again, another consulting practice, um, uh, that followed the work I'd done from them. So, so I, so my connection construction started over 40 years ago. Um, and, uh, oh. and then in, in, in earnest, uh, it really began, uh, when I was in the consulting practice, uh, where I was doing things like strategic planning, uh, operations analysis, and those kinds of things for both contractors. And then I kind of expanded the window a little bit for, at the time uh, to include owners. Um, again, and again, what I'll refer to in most literature, even the today, I think it would be described this way, a company that does not have as their core business construction, that is that has capital programs ongoing, is referred to in, in some circles as, as a serial builder. Uh, hotel companies are a good example of that. Petroleum companies are another great example, like some of the projects that you, you've done with Zachary. Um, their, their big clients are serial builders. They're, they're always building, renovating, updating, renovating uh, you know, structures and systems all the time. Um, and so that was the beginning of it. And I just continued on in that vein.